the threats posed by international corruption, which I'd like to talk about for a second, also can't be exaggerated. Those have also been exacerbated by the increased internationalization of crime and of fraud and of cybercrime. Corruption makes a country less stable. That's very clear. We've seen it time and again. I'm sure those of you who are working in the international sphere have seen that in different parts of the world. Corruption renders countries less safe. It stunts development. It thwarts populations from getting out of poverty. Um, and it undercuts a credible justice system. And when there's not a credible justice system, criminals thrive. It also, international corruption also, inhibits the ability of American companies, and frankly all companies, to do business in a fair and even-handed way around the world. A timely example of how corruption can, can really infect international business practices is the FIFA case that was recently brought uh, by the Eastern District of New York with assistance from the Criminal Division's Office of International Affairs. That's truly a global case. I'm sure those of you who read about it have seen that. Uh, nine FIFA officials and five corporate executives have been charged so far, and stay tuned, with various offenses, um, including RICO conspiracy, in connection with a 24-year-long brazen scheme to enrich themselves through corruption and the, the deliberate corruption of international soccer. Uh, which sites got the World Cup, which sites got other cups, um, which companies would get to be sponsors. That entire process was corrupted by these individuals. The office, as I said, the Office of International Affairs has worked closely on that matter, uh, worked very closely with the Swiss to coordinate some of the arrests, worked closely with other countries where individuals who have been indicted are located in, to begin the process of extraditing those individuals to the United States. We're sharing evidence with the Swiss. We're sharing evidence with a lot of other countries. They're sharing evidence with us. There are other investigations going on around the world of various aspects of FIFA. And this, is, this case has already had, as I'm sure you've seen, a very significant impact in merely exposing the corruption in international soccer. Um, and it's really an effort that could not have been done without the relationships and the, glo the global coalition that we've been able to establish over the years as a result of our increasing relationships with international law enforcement. In many ways, the FIFA case, the takedown and, and, and the charges, are really an outgrowth of relationships we developed over the years in our work in enforcing the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, the FCPA. Uh, we routinely use the FCPA. Uh, we're increasingly use it to using it to prosecute individuals and companies all over the world. Um, but I. One thing that, that bothers me a little bit is that sometimes we, when the FIFA case came down and, and on a couple other occasions, people say, well, it's the United States, why are you the world police? First of all, a lot of the FIFA case happened in the United States, so this is not us reaching out to do a case that's not in the U.S. and doesn't affect the U.S. But make no mistake, we in the Justice Department don't view our fight against corruption as a, as a public service to the global community. Um, far from acting as the world's corruption police, we are forming strong partnerships with other countries, with law enforcement in other countries, uh, to combat corruption because it really threatens us all. It threatens us in the United States. Um, and the good news is there are a growing array of countries that are joining international anti-corruption organizations, and I think that's only going to change. And I think other countries are realizing the corrosive effect of corruption, uh, both in the country and all over the world.